بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على سيد الأولين والآخرين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In today's episode we'll be discussing about fasting Without any doubt fasting is one of the acts of worship that is a pillar of Islam. Fasting in Islam holds a special place as it was ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one of the five pillars of Islam. And among all the months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specified a, a certain month for fasting. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the month of Ramadan, elevating it about, above all other months due to its profound and spiritual significance. It is the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an, guiding humanity to righteousness. Within this blessed month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further distinguished a night called Laylatul Qadr, a night that is better than a thousand months offering unparalleled opportunities of worship, forgiveness, and spiritual growth. Fasting during the month of Ramadan is not merely abstaining from food or drinks, but a mean to attain piety, self-discipline, and a deeper connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's look at the definition of fasting. Linguistically, it means to withhold from something, to abstain from something. In terminological, in terminological terms, it is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by withholding or abstain, abstaining from food, drinks, and other nullifiers of fasting from Fajr until sunset. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those before you in order that you may be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now fasting is not just one category. It is categorized into many categories. Mainly it's either prescribed or prohibited. The first category is further categorized into subcategories, the wajib fasting or obligatory fasting. Now the obligatory fasting is also divided into two, into two, obligatory due to the origin of the law, without a reason from the legal component. This is the fasting example for this category of fasting or this type of fasting is the fasting which is obligatory upon us in the month of Ramadan. And another type is obligatory fasting due to a reason brought about from the legally competent. This is the fast that is performed as expiations, as a kafara, or as a vow, or to make up for the fasts that you have left due to certain reasons. Now the second category is mustahab fasting or voluntary fasting. This again is further subcategorized into two. Unconditional voluntary fasting, which has been textually evidenced with a time restriction, or conditional voluntary fasting, which has been textually evidenced with a specific time restriction, like the fasting of the six days in Shawwal, or the fasting of Mondays and Thursdays, or the fasting of Arafah, and also the 9th and 10th of Muharram. And the second main category is the fasting which is legally prohibited, which can be further categorized into Haram fasting and Makruh fasting. Haram, like fasting on the day of Eid, Makruh, like fasting on Arafah for the pilgrims, meaning those doing the, the worship of Hajj. Now let's look into the virtues of fasting, 
there are many virtues of fasting which the Quran and the Sunnah have come with. Among these are that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributed the act for himself alone, saying, as in the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fasting is for me and I will be the one to reward it. And also, all the type of patients are enacted in fasting. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah says that patience is three types. The first type is patience by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which involves seeking his assistance and recognizing that he is the one who grants patience. The second type is patience for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means that the motivation behind one's patience is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his pleasure and drawing closer to him not to display one's strength or re resilience. And the third type is patience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which entails aligning oneself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments and decrees, remaining patient along them and moving in accordance with them. And also, fasting intercedes for its owners on the day of Qiyamah. As in the hadith of Abdullah bin Amr, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fasting and the Qur'an intercedes for a man. Fasting says, O oh my Lord, I have kept him away from his food and passions by day, so accept my intercession for him. The Qur'an says, I have kept him away from sleep by night, so accept my intercession for him. Then their intercessions are accepted. It is among the acts for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises forgiveness and great reward. It is an expiation for sins and mistakes. Abu Hurairah anhu says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who fasts during the month of Ramadan with faith, seeking his reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will have his past sins forgiven. And lastly, the changed smell of a fasting person's mouth is better to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the scent of musk. Abu Hurairah anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لخلوف فم الصائم أطيب عند الله من ريح المسك That the change that happens in the smell or the smell uh, that comes out from the mouth of a person who is fasting is better in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the scent of musk. Now let's look at the wisdom of legislating fasting. The benefits of fasting are witnessed by all those with sound mind and pure disposition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated fasting for his slaves out of mercy for them and the means of their protection and salvation. There is great wisdom in legislating fasting as well as numerous great benefits. Among these are fasting is a mean fasting is mean fasting fasting is a means to realize consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allowing the fasting person to appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favors upon him. It teaches self strength, will and resilience. There is great humiliation for the devil in fasting. As the person who is fasting abstains from all his desires, including food and drinks. Fasting allows for kindness and mercy with the destitute. It purifies the body and gives it good health and endurance. Fasting consists of pillars. Mainly two pillars. The first being abstaining from nullifiers of fasting. Meaning, if you do these acts, then your fasting is nullified. It is obligatory for the person who is fasting to withhold and abstain from all nullifiers of his fast, like foods, drinks, and sexual intercourse. Ibn Hazm rahimahullah has quoted the consensus of the scholars upon this. The second pillar is covering the full period of abstinence. 
meaning that we, when we abstain from food, drinks and other nullifiers of fasting, we have to observe them from the time we start fasting until our fast ends. Fasting also has conditions. Some of these conditions are that the person who is fasting must be a Muslim. If he is not a Muslim, his fasting is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, the person who is fasting must have attained the age of puberty. And also, he must be of sound mind, meaning the insane and mad people do not have to fast. And it's not obligatory upon them, since they have lost their mind. And also, residency meaning he must not be a traveler. If he is not a traveler, meaning he's residing in his home, in his country, in his city, then it's obligatory upon him to observe fasting. And also he must have the ability to fast, meaning he should not be sick or facing any issues health-wise or otherwise that may prevent him from fasting. Therefore he must have the full ability to fast. And as for women, they must be pure from the menstruation cycle and postnatal bleedings. As they do not have to fast if these uh, two things occur. And after they purify themselves, then they can start fasting. And also, most importantly, if the person who is fasting, he makes their intention of breaking his fast or if he did not even make intention of fasting then his fasting is invalid now let's look into the etiquettes of fasting rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us many etiquettes of fasting some of them are hastening to break the fast meaning it's from the sunnah for the fasting person to hasten in breaking his fast as soon as he is certain that the sun has set and as soon as he has heard the call for Maghrib prayer. And also, it is mustahab or from the sunnah to break his fast by eating dates and it's more Uh, it's prescribed to eat three dates with water, nothing else. This has numerous health benefits also. And also, when the person is breaking his fast, it is from the sunnah to recite the dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us. ذهب اللما وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله Meaning, the thirst has gone, the veins are rejuvenated, and the reward is established by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, it is from the sunnah for the person who intends to fast, to have a pre-dawn meal, meaning before the fajr prayer is called, he should consume a meal for fasting. Without consuming any meals, it's also his fasting is correct, valid, but it is the opposite of the sunnah, meaning the sunnah is to eat something before fasting. And also, it is from the sunnah to delay his pre dawn meal as long as he can before the call for fajr prayer occurs. Therefore, we must be careful with this and observe the sunnah according to how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has taught us. And also, we must avoid the impermissibilities, meaning acts which are haram during uh, the time that we are fasting. And we must continue to engage in acts of worship and in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the fasting person should avoid harm, harmful acts such as backbiting, gossiping, lying, cheating, mocking others, listening to music, and looking at indecency. All this affects his fasting. He should likewise busy himself with devotional acts of worship as he has kept himself away from what is normally permissible like food and drinks. He should also engage in reciting the Quran, uttering the words of remembrance, supplications, prayer, and being good to others. And also, the scholars have stated that fasting is not something that is done with your uh, that, that is done with your stomach, meaning every part of your body should enjoin yourself in obeying obeying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala while you are fasting. And also, it is from the Sunnah when someone is attacked or insulted to say, "Ana saim." O inni sa'imun, meaning, verily, I am fasting. Now, f after knowing that these are some of the etiquettes of fasting, we must understand that there are certain things, if we were to do them during our fast, it would invalidate them. The, the first thing is eating and drinking. Now, if we eat and drink unintentionally, then his fasting is not affected. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, that if someone were to eat or drink something while he is fasting unintentionally, then he should continue to observe his fasting until sunset. Meaning he should not consider that his fast is invalid and start continue eating. Meaning he should stop and continue observing his fast. And also, one of the things that invalidates the fasting is deliberate intercourse during the time of fasting. And also, indulging in other sexual pleasures. And also, vomiting intentionally invalidates your fasting. Except for the case where you may vomit due to sickness and it's not in your control, then that is that does not affect your fasting. But if it were to be under your control and you do it intentionally, then your fasting is nullified. As mentioned earlier, for the women, the menstrual cycle and postnatal blood, meaning if these start during their while they are fasting, then they should break their fast and they are no longer able to continue their fast. And also, one of the nullifiers of fasting is insanity and losing consciousness. Meaning once the person loses consciousness or insanity, then his fasting is invalid. And also for the person who leaves Islam, who becomes an apostate, then his fasting is no longer, or his fast is no longer valid. Now, let's look at some of the voluntary fasts. Uh, fasting the six days of Shawwal, as evident from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a sunnah to fast the six days of Shawwal after fasting the month of Ramadan. And also the first eight days of Zul Hijjah, it is from the sunnah to fast these days. And also fasting uh, the, the day of Arafah for the non-pilgrims uh, uh, those who are not doing Hajj uh, they are recommended to fast during uh, the day of Arafah and also fasting on Muharram is from the Sunnah and so is fasting on Ashura the 9th or 10th of Muharram is also uh, from the Sunnah to fast on these days and also fasting most of Sha'ban, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast the month of Sha'ban or most of uh, the month of Sha'ban. And also fasting Mondays and Thursdays every week. This is from the Sunnah. 
and also fasting three days of every month and also fasting the white days meaning al-ayyam al and also fasting every other day it is from the sunnah now after knowing all of this we must realize that we cannot continue fasting there are going to be things that might occur that will prevent us from fasting therefore we must make up those fasts that we have missed it is not obligatory by the conscience of the four school of thoughts that a person who has missed uh, let's say uh, fasting on the month of ramadan or many days in the month of ramadan he had not fasted due to some village uh, reason then he is not obligated he is not obliged to continue or to fast them in a single month meaning he can fast uh, make up make up all those uh, days that he has missed uh, until or before the month of uh, ramadan enters he can make them up meaning he can uh, fast two days uh, this week and next week he can do one uh, one day or like that meaning he can just fast until he makes them up before the month of ramadan that is the condition meaning he should not wait if his fasts are too many or the days that he has to make up are many then he must consider uh, how many days are left if he were to fast in this manner meaning sometimes he might ha- he might not have time therefore he have to fast all of them in one month or continuously he has to fast all of these days as for delaying it is uh, uh, the scholars have differed uh, in this matter as evident from the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu anha that she used to uh, make up her, uh, the days that he has, she had missed uh, Uh, from the month of Ramadan she used to make them up in Sha'ban meaning just a month before Ramadan this is also permissible it is evident from the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu anha that she used to make up the fastings or the days that she has missed from the month of Ramadan in the month of Sha'ban meaning just a month before uh, Ramadan starts therefore it's permissible as long as they are able to finish making up those days that they have missed now brothers and sisters we must realize that this act of worship brings us many benefits and many rewards therefore we must not make uh, therefore we must not miss this opportunity to draw closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and miss the opportunity of entering through the door of uh, paradise which is called ar-rayyan uh, which is specific to only those who fast my dua is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from those who listen to good speech and act upon those good speech subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh